there, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about digital nomads, a hot topic at the moment in the Canary Islands. Before I start, let's do a few disclaimers for the forum warriors out there. There's been a lot of negativity in the various forums and also, of course, positive comments about digital nomads. So all I'm trying to do here is to show you a different perspective and to introduce you to some of these people personally or via video so that you can make your own mind up and maybe learn a little bit about them along the way. I found it interesting talking to these people. I hope you do too. Of course, if you do, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And likewise, if you don't, please feel free to switch off and always feel free to leave me a comment below. I will always respond, whether it's negative or positive. All I'm doing here is trying to share some information with you. I chose a random selection of people from the various forums on which I asked the question of who would be willing to do an interview. Before I met these people, I had no idea who they were. I didn't know their ages. I didn't know what they did and I didn't know which countries they came from. There's quite a lot of misconceptions about digital nomads or remote workers. Things like they're backpackers, they're just hippies with a laptop, they're party animals, cheapskates, surf bums and that's just a few of the things that I've seen and heard recently. So let's start by clearing up a few of these misconceptions. Maybe a good place to start is with a definition of what a digital nomad actually is. This definition is taken from Wikipedia. So, digital nomads are not backpackers. They are professional people who have either chosen to as they are self-employed or been allowed to, if they work for someone else, to work remotely in a different country. Digital nomads have salaries or are self-employed and, like everyone else, pay their taxes in the relevant country. Digital nomads are not kids. Typically, from the people that I've interviewed, they tend to be in the age group 25 to 35. Of course, some are younger and some are older. And like everyone else that is allowed to arrive in the Canary Islands by the Canary Islands government, they need to take a PCR test. According to a recent article in the Italian newspaper, The Corriere della Sera, these tech savvy newcomers are an asset to the local economy. Digital nomads, tend to stay for a reasonable amount of time, often three months, sometimes up to six months, or maybe even more. Some are even applying for Spanish residency to allow them to stay permanently. The same article in the Corriere della Sera says that digital nomads are not party animals. And I quote, contribute substantially to the local economy here. They pay for hotels, they rent villas, they hire cars, they eat out, obviously they do their shopping locally, and they pay for activities. Many of them are learning to surf, for example. Typically, they are contributing to the local economy here between 900 euros and 1700 euros a month, depending on whether they're in shared accommodation or in a privately rented villa. A large part of this obviously goes straight into the local economy. In another recent article, actually written by one of our nomads, Ria Massaguan, writing for the French newspaper, The Liberation, and again, I quote the article here. It's also worth noting that the Canary Islands government is actively encouraging digital nomads and has invested substantial amounts of money to encourage this growth. On February the 22nd of this year, the Canary Islands government launched an action plan aimed at attracting these remote workers to what it considers to be the best office in the world. I have to agree. The objective is to attract 30,000 of these remote workers or digital nomads in the next five years by investing half a million euros. According to Minister of Tourism, this will enrich the Canarian tourism sector and make it possible to rejuvenate the destination. I include the link to this full article and the other articles quoted in the description below the video. Digital nomads are not here to party. They're here to work. Like everyone, they have deadlines to meet, bosses to satisfy and an income to earn. So 
let's move on and meet some of these people. I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed meeting these people. This is Chloe. She's another Hello. digital nomad. And can I ask you what you do here? Um, so I work remotely uh, for a beauty brand uh, based in the UK normally. Mm -hmm. And I'm in marketing. So what made you decide to come to Puerto Ventura? It was the only place that was open. Uh, so um. actually my very first lockdown um, I spent in the UK. Uh, it was quite lonely. Uh, I lived by myself and uh, really, really desperate to get out as soon as possible. And it was starting to look like there might be a second lockdown in the UK and I was checking BBC News every single day, checking the travel corridors to see where I would be allowed to maybe go out. Um, and at the time I was only thinking of going for a weekend or to work remotely for a week. I wasn't thinking longer term. And one day, uh, 28th of October, uh, they, the BBC announced at 8 p.m. that they opened the borders of Crete and the Canary Islands. And I just literally went on British Airways Momundo to check flights and booked it within like 15 minutes. So I arrived here three days after booking my flights, 31st of October. Wow. And actually that's when they also announced uh, the lockdown in the UK. So I I've worked remotely before. Uh, I know it's not a problem for me, uh, but it gets really lonely if you live alone. Um, yeah. So yeah, I was just desperate to see people and just the sunshine as well. So what's a typical day like here for you? What do you do? The dream life. Um, <laughs> so we wake up, uh, we've had a few times some uh, sunrise, uh, yoga, meditation sessions. We have coffee all together as housemates and then all run to our bedrooms to start working, do my regular day of work, um, lunch in the sun sometimes here uh, with my housemates. The evening was great is that we have a lot longer days here. So I can go from going running uh, under dunes uh, by the sea, uh, meeting with friends, going in a restaurant, you know, most, well, all of us um, haven't been able to go to the restaurants and out in bars yeah. or anything yeah. during lockdown, so we appreciate it so much more. Um, and I recently uh, started trying to learn surfing. It's honestly, I can't tell you the feeling of being in the ocean 30 minutes after you had your last conference call in front of the most beautiful sunset with other surfers is just, yeah. So lucky to be here. <laughs> Would you say there was a disadvantage to working remotely out here? That is a very good question. I can't think of one <laughs> right now. No. What would you no, say to someone who was stuck at home like you were, thinking about maybe setting up their own business or seeing if they could work remotely? What would your Ab advice be? Absolutely. Do it. Stop thinking about it. Get on a plane. Um, but I mean, the work-life balance here is so different it's incredible do you think you're going to find it hard when you go back to the uk and you have to work in an office um, i originally came here for one week thinking <laughs> more than five story. months ago now i, lo I love <laughs> that a, a with long a, week with a yeah. carry-on luggage and obviously being here you rethinking the way you work the way you live your work-life balance you're thinking why have i been working from an office all these years um, and actually because everybody is having the same discussion is honestly the number one topic at the dinner table every single evening so you're not going back <laughs> how can we make this work long term we all i think we all like our jobs we don't want to change career or anything like that but how can we compromise and be able to do this at least part time and do you think you found a solution? And so that's what pushed me to uh, ask my boss if I could relo uh, relocate to Spain. Uh, and I'm very lucky they said yes. Oh my god! So I'll be moving to Spain without even going back to the UK because I'm getting all my stuff shipped here. I wanted to know, was there anyone that has been talking about another country that might be a suitable place instead of just Fort Aventura? So or if I'm no honest, months? it just happened because it was the only place that was open. Um, to be perfectly honest, the image I had of the Canary Islands was um, all-inclusive resorts. I'm living a totally exper uh, different experience of right course. now. Yeah. Uh, so it wasn't that it was never really on my list. We've built such an incredible, super tight community here that actually I don't want to leave. I get actually really emotional <laughs> talking about it because it's I think it's such a beautiful, yeah. tight group of friends. It's such a nice happy stance, isn't it? 
as a result totally. of after bad all this good is happening absolutely and a hundred percent a result of the pandemic actually because we would have never ended up in this situation it's completely extraordinary and there was even uh, i think a sort of natural pre-selection which meant that we were bound to get along because everybody who came here was you have to be active to come to this island because everyone i mean you do you surf you hike you cycle it's a sporty island yeah um, so for sure you get along, you have to like traveling, you have to have this get up and go attitude and not being scared of jumping on the flight because that's what every single person who came here just before lockdown did because you had a window of three days to get your flights. Well, at least the, the people that I meet, everybody is single because to be able to, again, jump on a flight like this and escape, uh, you wouldn't do that with a family or, you know, yeah. it's more difficult with partners. So naturally you end up with this tight group of people who all share the same Thanks. common denominators yeah exactly um and we all arrived at the same time so it's like a big erasmus 2.0 uh and it's amazing Do you find any disadvantage with living with a load of housemates can't imagine going back to living by myself now no. it's amazing i mean you have breakfast lunch and dinner with friends that sounds like a fantastic life <laughs> i get really excited talking about it let's meet two more nomads Gian mario an italian living in london and Eduardo, a South American living in Italy. You're an Italian living in England. Yeah. You're a South American yeah. living in Italy. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And you both ended up in Puerto Ventura. Yes. Yeah. How? I was uh, wondering to go somewhere because in Italy it was getting really tough living because it was like my was like waking up at eight, working till six, and then everything was like uh, closed. I couldn't go work out. Because all the bars closed at six, everything closed at six. Yeah, so yeah. that's why I wanted to go somewhere else where I could have like my freedom and uh, to have just a normal life. I read his post on, on Facebook about traveling yeah. and do like smart working somewhere else. So you didn't know each other before? Yeah. Um, so I was quite frustrated um, of lockdown in UK. Um, I stayed the first wave in London. Um, so probably the first wave arrived around early March and then since day one uh, of lockdown I stayed in the house uh, okay so then the, the first wave then summer in Italy and then again lockdown in London and I was like oh gosh I'm not gonna stay here for another, another wave because I knew how tough it was based on the first experience yeah and then I stayed in Italy and then 2020 finish it, finished and then the start of 2021, I said, I'm going to put down a list of three bullet points. And the first one was to work remotely from a hot place where COVID restrictions were quite lighter. So then I put this post on Facebook and I put a post on the IG, the IG Discovery. It's one of the most famous um, travelers blog in Italy on Facebook. Yeah. There are a lot of travelers mm -hmm. and they organize this trips right yeah, yeah. yeah like I want to go here who want to come with me and I put this post and I actually selected three destinations um, so the first one was Canary Islands in general and then second one Portugal and then the third one Dubai the decision was quite easy because Portugal went straight away in January went straight away in yeah. lockdown again so closed Dubai different time zone compared to UK. Uh, Ed and I met two days before to, to depart. To oh, yeah. We organize everything on uh, Zoom. Yeah. yeah. So we check like <laughs> the itinerary, the calls, everything. Yeah. Fantastic. We yeah. did a um, very um, nice Excel spreadsheet with all these expendings that we were mm -hmm. going to Yeah, face. we did a budget. We obviously we wanted to travel with the budget. It's yeah. not like, um, you know, a trip no. that you go for a week yeah. or two no, weeks and then it's living. It's living. Yeah, well. This is like living. Can I ask you what your budget was? Yeah, of course. It was okay. around 1,500 yeah, 1, euros. Per We're talking person. about euros per person, yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously we were budgeting for food, yeah. um, accommodation, yeah. um, entertainment, like yeah. entertainment, yeah. excursions, yeah. also the car we could consider. Car, the car. fuel, and so PCR and also was in our budget. PCR? Everything. Of course. Covid PCR. And how, how have you managed with your budget? Is it on on target? Yeah, it was on Perfect. target. So yeah. good. <laughs> yeah. Keep we track. Well spotted. Everything. Um, one hundred percent. And, and can, you, yeah. can you have a good life within that budget? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. We can. yeah? Actually, yeah. funny enough, we arrived here for two weeks. Like our objective was to stay in Canary Island for yeah, two, weeks. Sure, two weeks. 
one-way flight, so without return, and then the third day, we were already discussing, okay, let's stay more. Yeah, when did you arrive? 23rd of January. We started from Gran Canaria, actually. Oh, you did? Yeah. So we arrived to Gran Canaria, and um, we stayed there for almost one month, one month yeah. and a half. Around, yeah. And then we decided to come here to Fuerte. Yeah, Why to did change. you decide to come here? To change. Yeah. And how does it compare? Uh, it's like uh, more relaxing, mm. less people. Yeah, I'd say I think landscape is much different. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, probably is wa more wild, wild here. Yeah. And um, yes, and then this is important for I think um, in Coralejo especially the ratio of digital nomads compared to the population is much higher mm -hmm. than Las Palmas, which um, is the main city of okay. Gran Canaria. So have yeah, you met no. lots of other digital nomads while you've been here? Mm -hmm. Not many. Not much, but... Do you go out a lot, or...? During working days, not much. Talking a little bit about Fuerteventura, we actually, um, you know, we started, uh, Ed and I, traveling, and then we met other guys in Las Palmas, digital nomads. So we rented this villa, we have six of us, we are ah, all digital okay. nomads, and we are probably from five different countries, French, uh, Sweden, Italy, UK, and it. So Ecuador. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. We all do different jobs, which yeah. is quite interesting. Yeah. Can yeah. I ask how it works living with other people? Do you have like a cleaning rotor or a cooking rotor? We don't have really like uh, a routine. Yeah. For example, it's like somebody has an idea like let's cook and have dinner together. So we go to the shopping market and we buy the food and we prepare something. Um, I'd say technology really supports us. So as you can imagine, if we have dinner together, we want to split the, the costs. Mm. And we use a really nice app. Yeah. There is yeah. an app that you, you put the expense that you do in the day, and the, the app just Calculate. do, calculates all the balances. What yeah. are your jobs, by the way? I'm a business consultant. It's, it's a project about like smart roads. Uh, it's, it's a pilot. So I am a civil structural engineer, and I work for an Australian company. Uh, that is as a satellite office in London. My current project is uh, at the moment I'm working on HS2. It's the fastest train line in Europe that connects London to Birmingham. I'm working also on a um, um, development that is funded by Cambridge University and is for senior living. So okay. it's for um, yeah, senior people. People like yeah. us. <laughs> 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 and how does that work, working remotely? It's great. The sensitive. first thing that we ask is for internet speed. Every every time that we move around is how is internet connection? Even more like having a pool or bedrooms or kitchen, first question, yeah, yeah. internet exactly. connection. In Las Palmas I found better connection than what I have in London. And it's here free. as well. How did you find the Airbnb? Airbnb. Airbnb. Yeah. 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 It's for bed villa mm -hmm. and we, we share. A um, couple of rooms per week, and we do rotation. The pricing we're talking about 15 to, from 15 to 20 euros a night, and yeah. look where we are. Like, yeah. It's, it's pretty incredible. Cool. Yeah. And yeah. you've got the beach just down there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, and you can um, walk into Carlo, can you? Yeah. 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 Can I ask about the HS2 just because it's so interesting yeah. and so current? Uh, when COVID is over, do they expect you to be back in an office? That's really interesting. Now, mm. I, I think that's where we should direct our conversation. What's happening mm. right now is that the business is making money. As long as there is workload, we can handle it. So the technology is supporting us and we are productive. Mm. So now the discussion is um, the business towards the employees. Are you happy to work abroad remotely? not essentially abroad because they are obviously families and stuff and so on and the uh, the easy answer is yes we want to be flexible sure. but what about the double taxation yeah. what about mm. legal requirements yes Fire not an important one social team building ah. i am not getting to meet my colleagues no. so that perspective like the social perspective is is very hot topic uh, we are trying to organize uh, online socials, but it's not the same. No. You can have a beer, a pint or two, <laughs> but it's not like a pub. And what about the taxation side of it? I just spoke oh. yesterday with the HMRC. Yeah. And from the UK perspective, it's not an issue. The issue comes when Spain when finds out that you've been here for a long time, more than six months. 
months and they ask you well you stay the little quite a lot and you start need to pay taxes. Do you think there's a disadvantage to being a digital nomad other than the social aspect that you talked about from work? Mm. Mm. I don't see any. <laughs> I don't see any. That's a good uh, answer. Think, so the answer of a 25 years old guy, it's no, with, I don't see yeah, any don't disadvantages. See. And can I ask how you, old you are? I'm 31. What do you see in terms of the age group of the typical digital nomad? that you've met here? Yeah, so the, the typical age probably is 25 to 35. What's the, the most, na the major nationality? Is the one French. that stands out? French, I think French. Uh, we met also Italian. We met lots of Italians. Yeah. Yeah. Have you got an idea of where you might go next? In Morocco. For the next step, we are leaving here to 27th of April. The next step, we started from Africa, and then yeah, we realized yeah. Africa, the, the south um, east side of Africa. So Kenya, Ethiopia, Uganda, we are open to the world. Can I ask you about COVID and how you feel? Do you feel safe here? Yeah, it's a bit safe. Yeah, I see like people, like uh, people here is really taking care, like wearing masks, washing their hands every time. So yeah, I feel safe. Obviously I still wear my masks and everything, but here I feel safe because my mental health was quite affected. I was almost on the limit to be depressed. Uh, when I was back home and like the fact of I was working every day and then everything was closed afterwards just, my daily routine it was horrendous horrible yeah, yeah. and the only way to solve this this issue was to speak loud to my company and they supported me so yeah. we've been talking to these two guys for quite a while now we've just met some more have their housemates who all live together in this amazing villa would you like to introduce yourself and tell us what you do yeah, I'm Leah. I'm from France, from Paris, and I am a journalist. When did you arrive here? At the same time as these guys? Yeah, same time. At the end of January in Gran Canaria, and then I left, and now I'm here since two weeks. And do you like it? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. yeah. It's very nice. Different from Gran Canaria, but it's nice, yeah. And I believe you're from Sweden, is that right? Yes. And do you find there's any disadvantages with being a digital nomad? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, not so I'm a freelancer, like I can mm -hmm. do So you literally whatever. can live and work anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. As long as you've got Wi Fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said you're exactly. mm. Here there are like numbers of builders. Yeah. I think probably eighty percent of those is they're all digital numbers. Yeah, because there's something mm. worth pointing out. If you guys weren't here these villas would be empty. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. The bars would be empty. Yeah. 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 You, I mean your contribution to the economy is and now let's meet Simonetta, a lawyer and linguist from Palermo in Italy. And this is her lovely apartment right by the beach. Here we are at the beautiful Bristol Beach area. This is Simonetta, another digital nomad. And she lives here, which is pretty amazing. So, Simonetta, tell me what brought you here. If I had to say the first thing that brought me here, it's uh, surfing. <laughs> oh right, you're a surfer. <laughs> yeah, I started surfing this summer and then I kept surfing during the lockdown in Sicily. And then a friend of mine told me that he was coming here and he's an uh, old digital nomad. So I said, uh, okay, why not? I mean, so I packed my stuff and I took a flight and I just and when did here. you come? I arrived on the 6th of February. And you're staying until? Who knows? <laughs> Not too many plans. Just a one-way ticket, and uh, I'm. We we'll probably stay until June, maybe, and maybe um, uh, spend some time in other islands. I okay. haven't decided yet. I'm a, originally a lawyer, but I set up a legal translation firm uh, seven years ago with a good friend of mine, a colleague. So we basically do legal translations in any language there, and we have people working with us to so set up a network of lawyer linguists everywhere in the world. So, so and, you can yeah. do that anywhere? Anywhere. You are. Anywhere. All our yeah. linguists, <laughs> they live everywhere. There's some of them are in Canada, some in Mexico, some in Europe, some in uh, Indonesia, everywhere. So tell us what a typical day would be like for you. Oh a, my work, God. a working day? Well, a working day. <laughs> okay, um, uh, a working day would be like uh, waking up at like 8, 8.30. And then I get breakfast to start the day, and then uh, um, I'm meeting uh, online my project managers just to organize the day, and then you know just coordinating the whole staff, talking to clients, sending some emails, revising some documents. And then I usually have a break, quite a long break, and so I stop between twelve or thirty until three, three thirty, 
quite long, very civilized. So uh, normally I, I, I try to go surfing or you know for a walk or running or meeting friends, enjoying the, 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 the amazing place where I'm staying. And then I come back at 3 or 3.30 home or sometimes I work in some bars or some places ah, where... So like co-working spaces? Oh, no, well, also like in some, you know, little bars that you have along the beach. It really depends if I really need to concentrate, I really need to, you know, maybe uh, edit a document, I need to be home just to be, you know, more focused. While if I just do, need to coordinate and send emails and easier stuff. Yeah, yeah. Any beach bar. Any beach bar. As long as it's got internet. So what would you say was the disadvantage of being a digital nomad? There are not so many, but I think the, 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 the main disadvantage is just that you move so fast or you move to so many places that in the end, it, if you really want to set up a community of people, of friends, it's kind of difficult. So I have friends and people everywhere in the world. And what would make you move from here to somewhere else? First time I did it, one, one of the first places was Argentina, and I was really passionate about tango, so that's why I went there. Oh, wow. So it, it all comes to uh, hobbies, passion, or you know, just friends being somewhere. So yeah. uh, in, in nice weather as well. Yeah. I would love to go back to Central America. Right now, it's uh, it's not possible because of COVID. Or Portugal as well. Good weather, beach, surfing, nice people, nice food. What about the cost of living? Is there one place that you found that's much cheaper than anywhere else? Well, Argentina was 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 okay. I mean, it was not expensive as Milan or London or other cities in Europe. I would say here it's quite it's quite cheap, but in general, I would say that Spain is is, is quite cheap. So could I see what your rough monthly outgoings would be here in Puerto Rico? Uh, it's about I would say a uh, thousand five hundred. Uh, like cost like between housing, car, uh, renting, you know, uh, uh, renting, I don't know, a board if you want to go surf. You're renting a very nice place. Of course. By the beach with two bedrooms. Of course. Yeah, you could also, place, you yeah. could also be with yeah. less. Yeah. There are a lot of surfing houses and but I, I wanted to stay by myself. To yeah, my yeah, yeah, own yeah. Own yeah. Space. we've had different ideas. We've met some other nomads that live in these huge houses by the beach with five bedrooms and they all just live together, cook together, eat together and obviously their outgoings are much less. I could consider that but first of all I need to find and meet people that I you know, feel comfortable yeah. to do. I wish you just some. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what would be your top tip for a digital nomad thinking of coming to Puerto Ventura? Mm. Or anywhere really? Yeah, anywhere. I would say that uh, being a digital nomad, you have to be very, very uh, strict with yourself. Yeah, discipline, absolutely. Yeah, you look, you look at the blue sky, <laughs> the blue sea, the distraction. Yeah, exactly. Always yeah. distracted. Yeah, I can understand that. I would say that this time, I would have never expected to reach this kind of, you know, way of living. So I'm very, very happy, and I feel very lucky to be able to do it. It was not just, you know, being lucky. I, I worked a lot. If I have to go back and see and look at my life when I was working in Milan, there's not comparison at all. I would never go back. Never. No. Sorry if there are one of my, you know, about ex bosses looking at this video. Uh, I loved you. I loved working with you, but yeah, I just prefer this. So can I ask, how does the safety element of being here in the midst of a pandemic. How do you feel about that here? And of course, I'm wearing the masks when I'm going out, but then the fact that all people come here and taking the test just before coming, there's a lot of reduced risk. So uh, my uh, fears uh, were, you know, just slowly reducing, 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 and then now, of course, I not try to pay attention, but I feel much more relaxed. Yeah. And when people call me from Italy, my family, my friends, I say, of course, they sh I'm sure that, they sh that there could be someone like having the virus. I don't feel the same risk as back in Europe. And now let's meet Giacomo, the housemate of Chloe, who we met at the beginning of this video. We're here with Giacomo in his beautiful villa, just by the beach in Coralejo. And we're gonna have a little guided kind of tour to make jealous. Explain <laughs> what it's all about, being a digital job. nomad. <laughs> so we are four, five digital nomads at the moment. Uh, out and uh, I was here last year. I was yeah. locked down here for five months. Here with my startup team. And 
So then in December, you know, in January, I said, why should I stay in Italy at the moment? Let's fly back. That's what I've done. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stay for a few months more. Are you so. sharing it with people that you didn't know before this time? Uh, no, exactly. We didn't know these people. Uh, they were, um, uh, I became through, through networking apps, uh, I got connected to people. Uh, I started living in another place with two, and then we got this place, yeah, and then we moved here, friends, and then yeah. we found other people. And Get three Wi Fi's up, oh, yeah. you know, and down, oh, connected to the same fiber, so yeah. it's super fast. Yeah. We can take calls, multiple video calls at the same time. Oh, that's fantastic. And this is, this is a trend in the area. House is understood that now it's not true anymore. It's digital, remote it's like workers, so now they need to adapt. Uh, I and saw you studied at Stanford. <laughs> I did some yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. I did business training at Stanford, and now it's super exciting because we're launching um, my late, latest startup, a new networking platform, uh, meaning that uh, we connect you to people that you should meet, and we tell you why from a professional point of view, and we do it within communities. All and right. Communities are alumni networks, are research again, any anything, any network, any LinkedIn group, is basically is gonna use our platform. It's yeah. a new LinkedIn. That's what we're What's about. Loungy. Loungy. And we created a community, a group. Yeah. So we can create any unlimited type of groups. It's like um, you know, like a Slack yeah, type of yeah, thing. Yeah. So it's for a group. But really focus on matching people. Okay. Using geolocation, their professional goals and suggesting people. And we just launched it <clears throat> five days ago. It's growing and there's very That's good engagement. Good. So we're actually gonna hire um, a person full time to actually develop that because potentially it's massive yeah. because yeah. there is a need to connect when you're nomad to other people locally. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how long have you been a nomad? Uh, not much, I would say a year. So since, since the pandemic. Since you ended up yeah, yeah. The pandemic. Since the pandemic. So since it was March. because of the pandemic. It was already in my plan. Yeah. To be to be spending the winter here. I know for since 2014 for yeah. surfing. Yeah. And they said, in the future, as soon as I, my biotech company doesn't need me anymore, my presence, I would just move here for yeah. the winter. Yeah. And happened actually last year without, yeah. without me pushing. Yeah. I was here yeah. and I found myself locked. So what do you find the best thing about being here? Uh, I would say the, the fact that I can do something that I like, which is surfing, uh, the weather. Um, and I have to say that all the people that, that I met and we keep meeting uh, super interesting communities of That's digital really nomads. We have a photographer <coughs> in the house, different backgrounds, people from consulting companies, successful entrepreneurs, and there is such a big melting pot. Yeah. I call it kind of the Erasmus 2.0. You know the Erasmus yeah, program, yeah. right? Yeah. But this is more when you work, yeah. but it's the same feeling. Uh, you are moving to a new place that you don't know people it's like Erasmus. There is this dimension of you know uh, being part of a community, which is the Erasmus. In this case, it's a digital nomad, which yeah. is this yeah. new thing. Yeah. And then uh, you help each other. You're going through different the same problems, the same challenges. Exactly. Open a bank account, or getting the phone, or getting the fiber ready. You know. So it's, a, it's a kind of a, the same feeling, yeah, but yeah. 20 years later. Yeah, it's amazing. And what are the mixed nationalities? What's, what's the, the majority of people? Uh, in our group, uh, we have quite a bit of Italians. Yeah. But then we have Dutch, Germans, French, Belgian. Age group, I would say between 25 to 45. How did you come across with the idea? It just randomly happened like a few days a couple of weeks ago because we have this platform for communities and we say you know what let's try to for the digital nomads community many people posting on whatsapp or on slack say hey i'm a graphic designer this is what they need they, they just need lounging yeah. and so we said you know what let's start let's do it we started and the feedback is very good and it's the highest engaged group ever that we have ever had. In five days, like people chatting, connecting, people met, new people met. People from, from here. From here, yeah. start using the platform yeah. to actually yeah. connect. And now there is something that actually Specific. fits yeah. fits the needs. And where are people being digital nomads on the island? Is it mainly in Coronejo? I think also, I've seen also people in the south. Yeah. But it's mostly, I would say mostly here. Here is more the sport, the surfing is mostly the 
top oh, the yeah, north the shore north end, yeah. uh, and then and I guess also because uh, there is a younger population in here and so digital nomads naturally are around yeah, yeah, this yeah. part of the island but there are other people who are down south yeah. or in the middle of nowhere living in fincas I know some fincas of people like artists or even entrepreneurs like completely isolated from the world and they live in their own finca in the middle of the island feel safe in terms of oh, yeah. covid here yeah, yeah yeah i mean we 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 are careful but yeah safer than anywhere else i would say so what would a typical day you might go to surf early and then you come back uh, you start working that's my my co-working space uh then uh, you know just uh breakfast, you chat with your flatmates and then we start working. So sometimes we, we work, we move maybe to a bar to yeah. work a bit uh, just to change the environment or we stay outside at the pool. Yeah, until five, six. And then after that, either we go surfing or we go play in beach volley at the Rio Hotel. And then we do activities like together. Uh, so that's why it's like, it feels like so it's very social, it's yeah. very social yeah. because we're like isolated. Yeah. And we get together uh, and so we organized hiking, we went for uh, to the canyon down in the south, we went to um, Sotovento, Sotovent so it's a very social, uh, within the Covid restriction, of but... Course, yeah. um, Do you find it you, that you're more productive working this way than being in your office in Paris, for example? Oh, 100%. The point is that we, because this environment you feel more comfortable you're actually more productive uh, you maybe work a bit less intense more yeah. intense yeah. Um, and everyone's super concentrated so we, we just work if we have calls to take we move so it's very productive but then at the same time at five o'clock or six o'clock yeah. you said okay let's go and play beach wallet so um, your working environment is very much here you're not using co-working spaces because there's lots yeah. of those being advertised also, all over the place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess for, for those people who are living in a small apartment, yeah. then might go to the co-working. Maybe with lots of good Wi-Fi. Yes, yeah. correct. Here we have good Wi-Fi. You, you have seen the house. Garden I mean, pool. there are other people that are coming here to co-work with us. So. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> we got to rent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what would your top tip be for a digital nomad who is thinking of changing their life and coming to West Ventura? What would your tip be? Uh, take a one fly ticket. Just do it. <laughs> a one way ticket. Uh, <laughs> life is super, super easy. And, and whenever we, we just talked even yesterday about the, the fact that everyone is super happy. Yeah. Everyone is super happy. You look really happy. Yeah. I'm we really we have the dimension, we have the good people around, smart, interesting. We do activities. Um, we can whenever we want. We could go back. It's not that yeah. we're locked here. And we will go way. back at some stage. Probably, yeah, yeah. But the idea would be to start thinking about. Oh, let's get this house, for example, rent it, lock it for six months for the winter. Yeah. And we come back. All of us. We might see each other uh, again yeah. in the same place. And yeah. maybe we just travel. Uh, so we're planning to go to Sardinia this summer to maybe do some co-working there and then nice. get a house. The same people. There is this global dimension of uh, connecting people that are uh, super interesting. So tips wise, I think life is, is easy. Yeah. It's much easier than anywhere. anywhere and would else. you say it was more economical? Oh, than Paris? 100%. Yeah. Uh, it's, you divide it by three. Really? The cost of living. So what would you yeah. say your monthly living expenses were, for example? I would say, you know, between uh, the apartment and, and basic food, I would say you are around the 700, 800. Wow. Cost of food is quite cheap. Do you go out quite a lot? Um, maybe once a week we go yeah. for dinner with a few people well, if you mix. Whatever you're allowed at the time. Correct. This week it's four, last week right. it was six. Yeah. Or even doing some movie nights here or yeah. you know, dinner here. Do you think all the nomads are working in some way or another with each other? Majority are working for a company, so that means that you know they're working alone. However, okay. however, what's happening is that you start collaboration. Uh -huh. And now I might maybe have some investors coming from oh, the, wow. the, the digital nomads community. So oh, it's like when you connect people, yeah. meaningfully, things happening. 
things happen. Yeah. And, and it's so exciting to see also collaborations sparking professionally between the people, not just, hey, let's go surfing together. Mm. Oh, let's, uh, let's launch this little project together. Is there anything negative that you would say about your new lifestyle? Um, well, yes, maybe. Uh, it's the, the fact that I miss my, my friends in Paris. So the only thing missing in San Diego for me it was more this cultural part. Yeah. But then you're like, you, you have a trade-off to yeah. make. And you have that in Paris. And you, you have that in Paris. Yeah. So the, a lot of people now are thinking about this idea of spending the winter here and the rest, the spring and the summer you spend in the city. Yeah, that's basically what we and do. Your enthusiasm is very infectious. <laughs> yeah. I think anyone hearing it will probably decide to put their pens down and fly away straight away, actually. <laughs> Interviewing Sylvia, another digital nomad living overlooking the beautiful bay of Coralejo, which I think you can see even though it's slightly dark. And now let's meet Sylvia Imperadore, a former corporate lawyer and founder of The Coaching Island, a well-being and transition coach. So, here we are interviewing Sylvia, another digital nomad living overlooking the beautiful bay of Coralejo, which I think you can see even though it's slightly dark. And we're going to ask Sylvia a little bit about her experiences and why she became a digital nomad. So maybe we should start with that question. Why did you become a digital nomad, Sylvia? I've always been a digital nomad, even when I was in corporate, when I was in charity, and I was an employee, because that is my nature, this is my spirit. A few years ago, I decided to um, become an entrepreneur, and I set up my uh, coaching practice. And very soon I realized that for me, freedom and flexibility were super important. Yeah. And I wanted to spend time uh, also traveling. So then I um, created this uh, online coaching practice that uh, allows me to be anywhere in the world. So as long as I have my laptop with me and a good Wi-Fi connection. Yeah. I chose Coraleco because I really wanted to, to be by the sea. I, I'm in London, I was bit missing that uh, like sense of being close to like water you and, get much nearer to it <laughs> and now, now I found the, the, the perfect uh, place for me because it's a village but it's like a proper town with uh, shops and uh, and bars and restaurants um, and also the beautiful beach I have my own space here yeah. um, it's quiet uh, it's um, it's peaceful and this is what I need for my from my yeah, for your work yeah. So I'm a well-being coach. Uh, I uh, support uh, managers and leaders uh, around stress management, resilience, work-life balance and self-care. I believe that it's possible. They start to see that uh, everything is possible yeah. if you really follow your dreams. But that social life here, have you found many friends? Uh, uh, through the uh, Facebook group and other digital nomads, digital nomads yeah. and the Slack group. Also. What kind of age groups have you found that the typical digital nomads are? Uh, probably around 30, 35. Uh, there are people that are much younger, uh, yeah. much, much younger, very clever and smart uh, people. I think my age is kind of not... Um, very common. Uh, so you're a little bit older than that. I am older, uh, but I, it's funny because I started to be a digital nomad many at the beginning of my career. Yeah. Um, and what advice would you give to somebody who was sort of looking for a change of career or looking to do something different and was thinking about becoming a digital nomad? I would say to be clear on on what is really non-negotiable for them because sometimes people you know, they dream about being you know, be on the beach you know, on, on kind of a holiday life but that is not what a digital nomad does because actually as I told you like you also have to be very focused you know, otherwise it's very easy to kind of like get distracted. Self-discipline has, has been something that I think everyone that we've talked to has said is an important element and of course good Wi-Fi? Uh, my first question is always, uh, how is the Wi-Fi? Is it strong Wi-Fi? Do you have fiber on it? Yeah. Because especially with video calls, you, you have to have a strong... Yeah, I think because there's no tourists at the moment, I think digital nomads are the only people who are paying the rent. So I think it's in, people are looking at putting in mm. fiber optics or the best internet solution they can. Do you think you need to speak the language of the place that you go or do you just pick it up so. as you go along? I don't think so. I, don't, I think, uh, you know, especially like if you speak English, that helps. No. Do you plan for the future? Do you decide, I'm going to do this for so many months, then I'm going to go there? Or do you just 
see what happens and to, live for the moment. To be honest, I live for the moment. I, I, am, I, I practice uh, mindfulness uh, and I also teach my clients to do that. I, I cannot go with the flow. So for example, I've been here since um, February the 6th and I've just extended my, my stay until probably May. And do you feel and safe I, in terms of COVID here? Yes, I do. I do. I don't go out uh, uh, like partying or like no. uh, in, in the night or I don't go to bars at night. I, I hang out with people, maybe like many people. I can maybe go for dinner or like a, a chat and do maybe some activities outdoor, go yeah. hiking. There's plenty of space, plenty of places You can to eat see. outside, you can drink outside, you don't need to go inside. Do you exactly, really? yeah. exactly. This yeah, is what exactly. I like. We, we kind of respect uh, you know the, the the rules so because of course also here there are rules to respect and, exactly, uh, and yeah. I think it's important. And they change all the time. They change all the time. So you have to kind of always yeah, to keep track. Of, yeah. to keep track and, 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 and be kind of conscious. Yeah. So um do you find it's a reasonably cheap place to live here in terms of you know outgoings? I I've noticed that for example um renting a car is uh, is okay. Yeah. Um Eating out, like also cheaper, going out yeah. and having fish and uh, like a fish dinner was um, convenient. Uh, but but it's um, it's 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 not bad at all. Like, yeah. I think in general Spain and, and, and here for what I know because I it's for me it's a, like a new experience. But I I I think it's 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 good also in terms of renting. It's uh, it's a good it's a good place to to be. Okay, so so I've heard all these words bandied around by the people I've been talking to. So co-working digital nomad, smart working, what do they all mean? Yeah, I think there are so many expressions and terms now. And uh, for example, I've noticed in my country, they call it smart working. And when you say that in the UK, they don't really, they talk about remote working. Uh, okay. Digital nomad is someone that works uh, like in different countries and, and with a good Wi-Fi and online mainly. So it's, it's, a, it's a remote from the office. Uh, and because the office is you, is yeah. your, is your, you're, you're carrying your computer, and this is the office. Like as long as you have like also a place to put your computer at table on at the bar or in your flat, it's it's, it's working not in the office. So digital because of course it works online um, using technology and nomad because it's not in the same place yeah. all the time. There. Do you find that a lot of people here just work out of the bars? Like below you, there's the Uga Uga bar, which calls itself a co-working space. Or from what I've seen, I've seen is like people sometimes they, they want to have a balance. So maybe they, they do some hours at home and then they maybe in the afternoon they come here. Like it's kind of maybe also having like a- be more sociable a, maybe, yeah. More sociable and yeah. also for a change because yeah. maybe they share apartment with others or maybe they feel lonely. Bar owners the in bars. general are quite flexible about that. They don't mind somebody going there with a laptop and just ordering yeah. coffee. Now I've noticed that there are also some um, new working um, spaces. There are non brand new places that are now becoming like a proper uh, hubs for, yeah. for that. So they offer also like uh, uh, all the facilities, they offer like yeah. a space of strong Wi-Fi. You could rent a cheap apartment, share it with a load of people and then go out and work. Thank you very much, that's been very informative. I've very much enjoyed meeting you. And me too, thank you very much for thank your you. time. So thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe. See you again soon. So if any of you nomads out there have got any tips and tricks about being a nomad, please put them in the comments below.